Here, I think we can start. Uh, thanks for coming uh, to listen to my lecture. My name is Helena Nicanole. I'm a new media artist, independent curator and educator. And together with my co-curator, Oksana Chvekiner, we are working on a project on Kenya Dream, which was presented in the context of Ars Electronica Festival this year. And today I'm planning to talk uh, about our project uh, in a context of uh, artificial intelligence and arts. And um, one moment. Um, yeah, so uh, at the beginning of my lecture, I will present you our project a little bit, and then I'm planning to talk about aesthetics and politics of AI in arts. Uh, these are two different approaches, which are used by many, many different artists and also artists from our show. So I'm planning to talk uh, about these approaches and also uh, we will discuss some projects by artists presented at our exhibition. And, um, and you can ask questions at the end of my lecture. Okay, let's start. I'm not sure if something went wrong. I wanted to start from, from another thing. <laughs> I wanted to start from the presentation of the project. Yeah, so um, uh, I want to say a couple of words about Uncanny Dream uh, show. So the show is dedicated to this uncanny feeling. Many of us probably have uh, during, during the pandemic. Uh, so we are trying to live in, with this like new normal state, uh, but at the same moment, many terrible things are happening and the exhibition uh, is trying to reflect on this anxiety and uh, fears during the pandemic. Uh, these are some pictures from the opening of the show. Um, yeah, so we kind of appropriated this neon green color uh, to connect physical and digital. And so we asked our artist also to wear this neon green for the opening. And here you can see some images uh, from the museum. Yeah, so actually some of these projects we are going to discuss today as well. Um, yeah, let's watch our teaser. So here, as you can see, many of the projects included in the show were are, are video, video games. Uh, but today we are planning to talk about AI uh, projects, AI related projects. And um, and first of all, I want to say a little disclaimer. So uh, artificial intelligence, uh, as as we mean it, is not this like general artificial intelligence. So we are planning to talk about artificial neural networks, uh, which are of course inspired by uh, some real neurons, but at the same uh, moment, they're really, really for, for today, they're really, really far from, from the initial inspiration and they, uh, they're in some parts, they're completely different from, from our brains. Uh, so they work like, um, uh, they, they possess some interesting uh, features which are different from the way our brain works. And um, 
So basically, what is the neural network? Some of them may be familiar with that. Some, some of you, so, some of you not. So, but uh, what what are neural networks? Are basically, are algorithms uh, which are uh, which can uh, can be trained on some different types of digital data, and they they can learn from this data. They can learn some patterns, and then they can predict these patterns. They can generate these patterns. When they learn them, they can reproduce them. Um, so that's it. And uh, of course, many of you uh, heard about neural networks, and maybe uh, you know that these kind of algorithms, they're implemented in, in many products uh related to like uh internet also google used uh these kind of algorithms to kind of predict what we'd like to see when we trying to find something and also like uh, when we make a picture already these algorithms they are trying to enhance the quality of the picture they're trying to uh kind of change our appearance when we're making selfie to make us look like uh, more Really, uh, so they're already everywhere. Uh, these algorithms, uh, but let's think why. Why is it happening? And here you can see this Gartner hype cycle for emerging technologies for 2019. And um, what what we can find here? So you can see that the, the, there are like these AI platform as a servers, uh, edge AI, explainable AI. Uh, general, uh, regenerative adversarial networks, which are basically GANs, and we are planning to talk about them a little bit later. Um, adaptive ML machine learning, so many of uh, different types of AI, transfer learning as well. Um, okay, here it is a hype cycle for emerging technologies for 2020. What is happening? We are uh, here. We can see also different types of AI, explainable AI, embedded AI, AI augmented development, responsible AI, genera generative AI, uh, adaptive machine learning, and so on and so forth. So again, many of them GANs again. And uh, what is happening now? This is like a hard cycle for emerging technologies for this year. And here again, we can see many different types of uh, machine learning, AI, neural networks, like generative AI again, AI augmented software engineering, AI augmented design, quantum machine learning, physics and form AI, machine, um, so like many, many different types again. But why is this happening? Uh, basically, it's happening because uh, neural networks are uh, can be, uh, they can be considered a general purpose technology. So what, what does it mean, general purpose technology? It means like uh, these kind of technologies, they can be foundation for uh, many different types of other innovations. Uh, then they can be applied really broadly in different types of products. And the thought like feature is that they're transforming society on many different levels. And all these features we can find when we talk about artificial intelligence. And uh, well, if we uh, think what are the examples of uh, this kind of general purpose technologies, we know uh, another example is, uh, for instance, internet. And um, one more example is electricity. So you can understand like when you compare like, the impact, um, uh, so you can understand then in the future, we we cannot even predict how it will transform the society. It's already happening everywhere. We sometimes we cannot notice that, but uh, it's already implemented like everywhere, and it will, uh, and it will, it will be developed even more in the future. So, and of course, like uh, as you can understand, like uh, AI can be can be used with different types of data. Uh, we can work with the. Like uh, you can transform this data into digital, and yeah, and then you can you can train AI on that data. And of course, if we talk about uh, arts, right? So we can uh, we can see that also artists they can uh, of course implement this kind of technology in their practices. So they in, in different different ways. So you can work with sound, you can work with images. Uh, with videos, you can work 
uh, with text also, you can implement the, uh, them into interactive projects, but also you can not only use it as a tool, but also you can uh, think of how these algorithms are transforming society and how they um, the uh, about the impact on society and about some specific issues they're um, they're raising. So that's really really interesting. And basically, uh, there can be actually there can be many approaches to that. Uh, but uh, for today, we are planning to talk about two approaches. So the first approach is this aesthetic approach when we like uh, exploring this kind of specific aesthetics of the technology. And the second one is more like problem based approach when we talk about artificial intelligence uh, and about some specific issues. Uh, because there are many of them. And we, we are planning to discuss uh, this also. So if we talk about the aesthetics, um, uh, and today we're planning to talk uh, only about visual aesthetics, uh, not about text, not about sound, only visual aesthetics. And uh, visual aesthetics, uh, if we talk about this, we can see that there are like mainly there are for today, actually there are also many different approaches to visual, but we are planning to talk about the most like popular for today. The first one is GAN, uh, Generative Adversarial Networks. And in that, uh, also like it became so popular, uh, so we can talk even about this uh, thing as GANism, this like uh, type of uh, art created with GANs. And another one is this doll E, uh, this clip architecture created by OpenAI. Uh, it's basically based on some kind of combination of GANs uh, together with some uh, transformer for text. It's like a huge neural network. And today we are planning to talk a little bit about how it works because it's really important uh, to understand arts also created with neural networks. Uh, so, well, if you talk about GANs, uh, you know that you can train neural network on different types of images. You can train it on some like landscapes. It can generate some landscapes. You can train it on like faces it, and it can generate some faces. And of course, deep fakes uh, also are created with GANs. And uh, we can talk also about computational photography, which is also implementing GANs uh, into the approaches. And even this like uh, uh, the image of black hole, which was created by this um, a wonderful person, Katie Bowman. It's also computational photography. So you can see like how big this impact is. Um, yeah. And uh, let's say a couple of words about how it works. Uh, if we talk about GANs, uh, GANs basically are two neural networks, the generator and the discriminator. And it appeared that the com this combination uh, works really, really good with images. So actually you can imply this um, uh, architecture to different types of tasks, but for images, they're really, really good, but how it works. So basically you have these uh, like data set with your images, like real images, and the generator trying to learn something from your data, and it's trying to represent your data set in, in the best way. And then uh, there is this another algorithm, uh, which is called discriminator, uh, which is trying to understand which images are real or uh, are they like generated by, by the generator. And uh, so they are trying to like, uh, um, so the uh, uh, so the uh, actually the generator is trying to fool the discriminator. So they are like uh, in this competition, they are uh, like uh, fooling each other. Discriminators trying to understand what's going on, like uh, where where are real images, where are fakes, and it really it works really really good. So. Um, 
and at, they can even like if you remember these uh, images generated like images of faces generated with the uh, style gain you can uh, you remember that these faces are undistinguishable from the real faces so like uh, when you have a lot of data and you have a lot of computational power you can see like how uh, how strong these algorithms are when you talk about images and uh, another thing which is important to understand some projects we are planning to talk about today is the latent space what is latent space it's actually some like technical moment um it's basically also how any of neural networks uh work so the latent space is uh, uh is how the neural network represents this like data set uh, we, we the, some patterns and from data set which it learned and here you can see like uh uh, the Latin space, some representation of the Latin space, and even uh, every uh, every part is basically, if we talk a bit about images, it's an image. And here you can see this kind of representation, like a two D representation, or a, let's say like three D. Uh, but actually, it's only like representation because if we talk about neural networks, they they don't work with this like two uh, D or three D. They work with this three, like multi dimensional spaces so it's like a latent space is basically have, uh, have has like uh, dimensions something like like 100 200 300 so it's like a 300 dimensional space it's not so easy to imagine it's linear algebra <laughs> but, but let's try uh, it's not easy also like it's it's really really interesting um this difference because like we as humans we live in this 3d world and neural networks they operate with this multi-dimensional uh spaces so it's like uh completely different from the world we live like this latin space um okay so and now let's talk about the the other approach which combines these uh gans together with some like text generative models this clip transformer clip transformer was uh presented by OpenAI, and here you can see like some examples which they like uh, created with this um architecture and as you can see like uh, they look like really really prominent they, they achieve these prominent results and basically it's neural network to which is trained to generate some image by description so you can uh, type some text it, it can generate some some image not only like one word you can type some like uh, i don't know some some phrase or something uh describing what you want to uh, to generate and it can create some results of course like open ai uh they are famous for that they didn't publish the model uh and they were criticized by uh because of that uh, but they published the paper and uh, and what happened actually many people in the world they were inspired by the paper and this is what I really like about uh, computer science community that it's like mostly open source uh, open AI are like uh, uh unfundable <laughs> in this world because they are not posting their models but the whole community is open source and of course like when they posted the paper uh many people in the world they were so inspired so they created implementations and now you you know like there are i think like uh it was before it was like some something 60 or 70 implementations different types of implementations on google color that you could use and you could create with the approach with this approach you could create images by description and uh let's say a couple of words about how it works i mean the technical details so basically it's like combining two neural networks the first one is this transformer uh gpt2 or gpt3 together with this uh like style gain or big gain or whatever like some a model to generate images and when you're combining two uh two different architecture in one uh it appeared that it can generate some really really interesting results so it's when it when we talk about like, for instance big gain which was trained on image net like the hugest uh, uh database of images which was labeled uh, which were labeled. And then um, uh, when it's like a mixing 
two of these architectures, you can see that it can generate not only things which are presented in the initial data set, but it can combine and can mix things and it can generate some really, really interesting things. Also, it can grasp some quite abstract things. It can grasp some, some uh, abstract ideas and which makes this algorithm uh, really, really interesting for us, I think, from, from my perspective. Uh, okay, so, and for this, um, and at this moment, let's talk about some projects from Uncanny Dream Exhibition, um, which are working with these like aesthetics. Uh, the first project is Stop and Light by Ivan, Ivan Netkachev. And for this project, he used uh, style GAN and he uh, started to train, to retrain the model. And this approach I, I really like uh, because it's like much more sustainable. You don't have to train neural network from like uh, from scratch. You can take some model which, al which is already trained, which already understands of how it can present image like visually in terms of like pixels and like uh, uh, shapes. And then you can, uh, you can take like a really small data set and you can retrain this model on your small data set and it can give you like quite prominent results with this approach. And um, what I really love about this project that in this case, artist, he took the model, uh, which was trained on, on charges, and he started to retrain this model on his data set. And the data set was collected from in-game photography. So it was um, uh, pictures made in uh, GTA San Andreas, uh, pictures of architecture also. And uh, he, he started to train the model, but he didn't finish the process. So he didn't want to create some like, prominent results. So he wanted to, uh, to achieve some artistic results, right? And that's really, really interesting to me because like in terms of computer science, probably computer scientists I would say that this model didn't train like properly, but what does it mean like properly when we talk about arts? So he basically, started to train the model and then he stopped the process of training and he took this model which already trained something from his data but it didn't actually forget about churches you know like so he combined two different types of like uh, uh, aesthetics and he created uh, the project based on these aesthetics and uh, he can see some images generated by a neural network and uh, here you can see the video where uh, the neural network interpolates between like some points in this uh, Latin space. Uh, let's watch some, some part of it. Okay, so you can see like how it's combining these two different types of aesthetics, like real architecture and some like uh, um, architecture from game and creates like really, really interesting uh, images, aesthetically appealing. Uh, another project, uh, which is also about aesthetics, is a neuroprodite by Nika Pishohanova. So for this project, uh, she trained neural network, uh, style GAN neural network on naked bodies. And then uh, she, uh, she used some pictures like generated by AI, and she actually chose the pictures which were in possessing some like uh, transgender quality. So they, she wanted them to look like in between of two genders. And then uh, she used another neural network to create, uh, to create 3D models from the pictures. And, and then she animated these uh, like bodies to create the, the film.
And to me, these images, like while they look really uncanny, uh, at the same moment, they are kind of representing the, I mean, metaphorically, they are representing the future of gender, uh, at least to me. And another project, which also works with these aesthetics and which use this clip, uh, clip architecture for text to image generation is Dream of the Machine by Great Cake, Kate Kranik and Sasha Sirichenko. And for this project, they... Uh, excuse me. Uh, for this project, they uh, presented at our website, they created the text uh, created by GPT-2 and they trained GPT-2 on some uh, dreams, plots uh, collected from internet. And then the GPT-2, when it generates some like uh, uh, kind of dreams, uh, they use this text to to create some images, like uh, also videos uh, generated by clip. Um, actually, we can watch um, some short part of the video. I was in a garden. It was a large one among the trees. I was watering the plants. I looked to see if a rainstorm was coming. I was in the garden alone. I was talking to a friend. She asked me how I was doing. I told her that something had happened and she was trying to hurry out to the store. She told me that I needed to go back and get everything ready for the store. I saw that the rain was coming and I wanted to hurry. I went to see if there was more rain. I looked up at the sky. It was cloudless and there was no clouds. I thought it was going to rain. I felt very calm. I felt that I was waiting for something. A grandmother is a little person with a little head. She is in a little house. She is a little girl. I know her. She is very old. But as I am standing there, I notice she is young. I am shocked. I have no idea how old is she is. I am not surprised. I can't remember her birthday, but I know it was in the last year. I don't remember her name, but I know it was Mrs. Err. They have a little baby, and I am very sad to see it. It's the first year of a new baby. I can't remember a name of a new baby because I don't remember her name. I realize that I have to do something with this little baby. I can't remember how to, or even if there is such a thing. So I try to think of a way to do it. I'm not sure. I think I need to put the baby down and give it to the old lady. She insisted the baby was her. Uh, so what's interesting with this project is that how they are combining the uh, this dreamy quality uh, of like text generated with the GPT-2, which was trained on dreams uh, plots and together with this kind of specific aesthetics of clip uh, architecture. Uh, sometimes, like also we, with this text, sometimes it's like really absurd, sometimes it has some like sense, uh, uh, which, which in many cases, like we, we find when we talk about like uh, about dreams, uh, which possess this like um, metaphoric, uh, unconscious, like images uh, from, from different layers of our uh, like, uh, mind. And it's really, really interesting way of combining two things like on metaphoric level together with technology. And um, yes, also actually artists, they, um, 
they created this interactive interface so you can use if you go to their website dreams.breakcake.com uh, you can uh, you can send your email you can write your dream plot and it will send you the video of cre created with AI uh, the video of this like uh, representation of your dream with this clip architecture uh, Okay, and now let's talk a little bit about different approach, uh, about this uh, problem-based approach of how we can work with neural networks as artists. Uh, so there are different, actually there are many issues related to AI, but we are planning to talk about three of them today. Um, and I will illustrate these approaches um, using some projects from our website, from our project exhibition. Uh, so the, the first problem is this like uh, so-called biases. And, um, and so what is biases? Probably many of you heard about that, this. So uh, in, in the context of machine learning, biases uh, are learned by AI from data. So there are some biases in society and then uh, uh, when you create some data set, uh, the bias can be implemented in, in this data set. And then AI can learn this bias and it can create some kind of feedback loop because it's like trained biases from society and then, then it re reproduce the biases. And I really love this uh, quote by Olga Rusakovsky from Princeton, the bias in humans is harder than the bias in AI systems. So it's really, really problematic because like uh, how we can trade, how we can train AI ethically, how we can collect data ethically, how we can uh, create ethically collected data sets. Um, okay, so it's in this project by Adam Harvey, Megapixel, Megapixels is about data set because we uh, uh, he found that many data set they were collected unethically and um, it's really really important and uh, this is also some picture some some screenshot from ImageNet this really huge uh, database and um artists like trevor poglin they uh they just recognize some biases also implemented in ImageNet in the category in person category and uh here you can see like uh, what 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 does look like uh image net so you, there are some categories and there are some images for each category and uh so it's like uh, uh this issue were uh, was like uh, really uh, why the discussed and um, well and another bunch of issues are related to the problem that AI uh, can be used as a tool for control and manipulation for civilians and as you may know like uh, it's widely used for civilians and uh, during the pandemic um, yeah Yes, and another problem is that AI is basically a black box. So we we never know why it like choose some some way how, how to behave, why it represents a data in this particular way, why it decides something. So we never understand this uh, because of like the but by, by default because of the way it works. And also, it's uh, uh, it's problematic because uh, of of this combination of uh, biases together with this black box state. So it can train, it can learn some biases, and it can it can represent some biases. And sometimes, sometimes it's obvious, but sometimes we never uh, know um, that there are some biases. So it's problematic. And this is uh, some example of like, it's not AI, some basic algorithm, but you can, uh, in this video game, you can understand like, uh, what am I talking about? Like, so this uh, algorithm is winning, right? <laughs> uh, basically, but you would never like imagine that uh, the algorithm can uh, behave like that, right? So, and let's talk 
about how these issues are represented by artists uh, at our show. So the first project I'm going to show you this like um, project you can touch, you can play by Anna Shustikov. And you can touch, you can play the quote from Barbie Girl uh, pop song by Aqua. And for this project, artists also use the clip architecture for text to image generation. And uh, she wanted to explore how the uh, idea of beauty, femininity, um, and even like uh, the, uh, the idea, the repre representation of woman is presented in this database, ImageNet database, because uh, this clip uh, worked with ImageNet. And when artists started to experiment, she recognized that in many cases, uh, this neural network presented this kind of like naked bodies or like uh, really, um, Faces which which look like similar these white uh, faces European women uh, many cases are blonde and uh, in many cases there were like these naked bodies generated by AI so and this is like a really interesting way of how we can understand something about this black box of how we can understand these biases inside of this neural network and. Um, and the another stage of the project is that artists train a neural network on these images, and it started to generate some like uh, images which looked similar. But the next stage is that she decided to create some new model, uh, some new data set of how uh, we can imagine women uh, in, in the data set. And you can participate in the project. So she's collecting data set during the festival during the exhibition and here you can upload your own photo of how you would imagine a woman uh, and you can add this photo to the data set and at the end of, of the project artist is going to train neural network on this data set and uh, these images and maybe videos will appear at our website so you can participate i encourage you to participate in the project please upload your own representation of women. So we can, uh, and what artist also says that we cannot uh, do something with the image net, uh, but we can train your, we can collect our own data set, we can train our own neural network. Um, okay, another project, which is also, it, it's not uh, about clip uh, architecture, but it's, uh, it's, it's used scans. And uh, for this project, Remote access by Eugene Kruglov, the artist um, connected to, to, he actually secretly installed uh, some, uh, some application for remote access to the smartphones of his friends. And during the months, he connected to these smartphones and he made some audio recordings, he made some pictures, some screenshots, some, uh, so he collected some data uh, from his friends. And then he, uh, he used this data to create the project. So uh, actually he was inspired by Sophie Kahl's surveillance project um, for this work. And uh, so at the website, you can see some kind of like artistic representation of uh, this feeling, the idea of surveillance. So he also trained again, neural network on this data set, and then neural network generated some, some images. But uh, during these, like, uh, re uh, when you see this representation, you cannot really understand which, uh, with some images you can, but in some images, you cannot really understand if they were generated with AI or, or they were uh, in the initial data set. So basically the, uh, the website represents this like feeling uh, of being surveilled in this metaphoric way in this visual with this visual representation. And also the artist used some some different types of image recognition, object recognition, and some analysis with neural networks to analyze the data and to to create some uh, some kind of uh, and that, uh, to, to analyze the data and to create some um, some like diagrams of 
um, of what the neural network understood uh, on the image, also not only images uh, which were in the initial data set, but also images uh, generated uh, with GAN. Okay. And uh, the last project, uh, which I'm going to show you the manifest and Latin space by Raman Selatkov. And for this project, it's really important to understand what a Latin space is. Um, so uh, the, uh, as we said, the Latin space is like this hidden space, uh, which is hidden by default, uh, the hidden space of how the neural network represents uh, the data set. And this project is um, actually uh, uh, is trying to to make the like hidden to make it visible, and in the exhibition space, you see here you can see how it looked like. So you can play with these uh, balls, and by moving the red ball, you can uh, you can see how the neural network interpolates between uh, in Latin space interpolates between different images, and for the um, and for the website, he created this kind of like a digital representation of the project. And here you can move the balls and you see how the, uh, the model interpolates between images and the model, uh, actually he, he took the model which was trained on ImageNet, which is also really important uh, uh, for the artist, uh, because as you, as you know, the ImageNet is really a problematic data set. It, uh, it um, presents some like biases from this data. So it's, uh, and in this playful mode, we can like uh, interpolate and we can talk about who is playing with the data, like uh, a big tech companies, big five, or like uh, uh, what is like uh, the point of this play. And um, what I really love about the project that it creates this physical interface. It's. Um, this physical interface with these balls uh, to actually, I, I wanted to show you this like uh, on our website uh, on, on no, no, how it looked, not on the website, but uh, at our exhibition. Yes, it looked like that. So here you can see the like screen with this uh, neural networks uh, interpolating between images. And here you can see these balls. And yeah, like uh, what I really love about the project that it used this like physical interface to uh, interact with this like digital, even like not not even digital, but hidden space of the neural network. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's all I wanted to present today and you can ask your questions you can ask your questions uh please questions comments no questions no comments Thank you, Oksana. <laughs> if there are no questions, I can show you, uh, I don't know, a couple of my own work. We, we have 15 minutes. I can show you a couple of my own projects. Okay. I'm not only a curator, but I'm also an artist. And I can show you a couple of my works related to AI. Um, I think the most, the most important in the context of uh, today's presentation is this like AI, uh, critical AI practice manifesto, um, which we created together with the artists Marco Donnarumma and Wesley Gottlieb. And this project was, uh, um, it started actually during the residency and during this think tank uh, by DAD uh, together with CTM Festival. Uh, so artists working with AI were invited, invited to this think tank, which happened in Berlin in uh, uh, December 2019. 
And so we spent uh, several days uh, like uh, talking, thinking, brainstorming all together. And then um, at the end of the project, uh, me and uh, together with Wesley and Marco, we decided to uh, create this critical AI practice manifesto, uh, which was presented at the uh, CDM festival. And actually the manifesto is the kind of open source also, so you can contribute to the, uh, to the project if you want. So, uh, and it's quoting now. Yeah, so you can find it like uh, uh, with this link, tinyurl.com critical AI. And uh, we wanted to kind of inspire the discussion. It's not like a bunch of rules of how you would work with AI if you're an artist, but it's more like uh, uh, our attempt to inspire the discussion about it, like how it would be if you wanted to work ethically, if you want to think critically about your tools. So, so the couple of things we wanted to emphasize, for instance, we are talking about uh, if, you, if you're an artist, if you work with AI, you don't have to, if you want to talk about AI, you don't have to work with the uh, algorithm. You don't want, you, you don't have to train neural network, for instance, because it's, super like uh, um, power uh, intensive um, like tool and algorithms. So you have to, uh, to have a lot of computational resources to work with this like, uh, and uh, in terms of sustainability, you don't have to, uh, to work with this if you want to talk uh, about AI. So maybe you can like make a film, you can make some different uh, you can use some different media. You don't have to use AI directly. I mean, neural network. Uh, another uh, problem is this: like uh, when you work with AI, uh, we suggest you to think like ethically um, about the data set. If the data set you used was collected ethically, if you are collecting your data set, uh, you have to think about like ethics as well. And another thing is, which is also really, really important is this uh, sustainability. Uh, uh, what I already mentioned today that uh, if we train neural network, for instance, GANs, uh, which is also like super uh, resource intensive and uh, you, you don't have to train it from scratch. You can use some trained model, you can retrain it on your data set. And you, if you, uh, if you train your model, you have to think about how many epochs you will do, how many, um, like how you can reduce this kind of, uh, this like um, uh, uh, epochs, for instance. So um, I really encourage you to contribute to the manifesto. It's open source. You can you can ask us to give access to the manifesto and you can contribute to it. It would be really, really cool. Um, okay, but what was also important in the manifesto that we, uh, we, we just noticed that many companies like big tech companies, they now invite artists to talk about AI. They uh, sponsor some projects uh, some artistic projects also, but they, uh, what is problematic that in the context of big tech companies, they always talk about AI as about like uh, uh, with this anthropocentric perspective. So they always talk about AI that like it, it can understand something, it can see, it can recognize, but uh, the problem is that with this approach, you are kind of, uh, eliminating the problematics of neural networks. So it's uh, really, uh, which is really, really important to talk about. So, um, so please contribute to the manifesto if you have to uh, say something about AI and ethical uh, practice. Um, maybe I can show you another project by me. We have a little, a little bit of time. Okay, so um, another project 
also made by me is Faces to Voices. It's a project uh, for we, we created together with Nikita Prudnikov. And uh, Faces to Voices is uh, this project is posted online. So you can uh, go to the website, Faces to Voices.live. And you and here you can uh, listen to the live stream and and also you can contribute to the project. So basically faces to voices is this uh, online interactive installation which is based on uh, on the algorithm which can recognize which can create imaginary voice uh, recognizing your face. So uh, actually we used, um the approach by this speech to face uh speech to face computer science pro uh, um, uh, project so in this project they wanted to uh to create the face using the sample of speech and also as you can see it's uh like really really problematic uh because in many cases it's like uh, reproduced like uh, some some uh, features like age or like uh, uh, ethnicity. So it's like a um, problematic project. And we, uh, but we use the approach and we wanted to, uh, to recognize faces and to generate these imag imaginary voices with AI. So you can, uh, and actually what also inspired us for the project that uh, during the uh, pandemic, uh, a lot of governments used surveillance technology the way to control the spread of COVID, and uh, and they were uh, like in, in many cases they 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 were saying that it's like uh, we we have to give up some privacy to contribute to the common good, uh, and actually it sounds like uh, it, it sounds like it makes sense, but at the same moment you never it's like not transparent you never know how what level of privacy we have to give up and how much data they do really need to respond effectively to the pandemic so it's like a, uh also super problematic so we decided to create a project this interactive project uh which can raise th these kind of questions in a way of procedural rhetorics so you can, when you go to the to this website, faces to voices .live, you can give the access to the camera of your device, your smartphone, your laptop, and when you give this access, uh, artificial intelligence will recognize your face and it will generate your imaginary voice and it uh, it can add it to the uh, live stream and then your voice will appear here in this live stream. So, but also like uh, I have to say that we are not collecting your private data. We are not like uh, saving your, this screenshot of your face. We are only collecting the data, like metadata of this imaginary voice, which basically like uh, some AR representation of like, the sound. Um, here we can listen a little bit to the live stream. <laughs> what I really love in this project that uh, the uh, live stream, as you can imagine, it's uh, co it's constantly changing uh, because of people who participate in the project. Uh, so you can contribute to it as well. And um, also, well, it's uh, and now it's planning to uh, to be part of uh, Athens Digital Art Festival uh so it's it's already live mode so but it's it won't be live forever so i encourage you to participate in the project 
<laughs> uh, otherwise, you may not have chance in the future. Uh, okay, I think that's all for today. Thank you for coming. Um, if you have any questions, please ask in chat. Okay. Any questions, comments, impressions, ideas? Thank you. Uh, also, one important note. Today, we have a live stream in the context of Ars Electronica Rave. Uh, it will be at seven, actually in two hours. We have this live stream. And we also have a concert uh, here in Moscow, uh, which will be live streamed. So uh, please listen to our artists. It will be like incredible performance. Um, I'm pretty sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming and listen to me. Bye-bye.